When I was maybe three or four, before I could read or write, um, I was, like all children, a pretty powerless kid. And I realized that if I said to somebody, the black cat raced across the alley, it would put a picture in their mind that was very similar to what I had in my mind. And that was an epiphany. I mean, it was a moment of, of power that most children don't have. And when I realized that, I think that it was at that moment that I realized how important the, the word was, words were. I would have writing assignments at school and get really positive reinforcement for them. That started me writing poetry at a very young age. And then when I reached high school, I began to publish. And by the time I was in college writing poetry, I started to win awards and go around to campuses and read. So I began as a, as a poet. And in fact, if you look at my work, a lot of my work begins as poetry. I actually write it as poetry, and then I transform it into prose. So I put in that connective tissue that you need to, to make it flow as prose. Not always, not every book. Every, every book is different. So one book may really ask for it and stay in that shape, like Out of the Dust or a Witness. But a book like A Time of Angels uh, began as a very long poem and then was transformed into a very long piece of uh, prose, novel. I love taking photographs and I really wanted to incorporate my photographs into some of my text. And that, you know, that, the idea for that came from Wright Morris, who was a photographer first and then took to writing after. When I had the experience of making the leap from the image to the text, the text to the image, because it's never, there's never a direct correlation between image and text. I just loved that experience. I, it, was, it was like mental calisthenics for me. Here it was my chance to be both the illustrator and the author and to take the two very separate things, but to bring them together in a way that created one thing that was bigger than the sum of its parts. It's not until I've been walking for an hour or so that I realized the boy at the Mini Mart could have called the police on me for shoplifting as I went out the door. It could have been a setup. It wasn't, but it could have been. I was lucky this time, I guess. Still, I can't rely on luck. I have to be smarter from now on. I have to think from every angle. I never know what's going to catch me and then not let me go. And those are the only books I write, are the books that catch me and won't let me go. What I know of the character in the beginning is fairly sketchy. And as I move through draft after draft, I go deeper and deeper into who the character is, who the set, what the setting is, and even what it is I'm trying to say about all of it. In 1976, my husband Randy and I packed our pickup truck with, we loaded it with shells, with books and clothes and Coleman camping gear and two cats. And we tent camped around the country. So we were kind of looking for a place to live. And when we drove across the bridge from Hinsdale and we drove up Main Street, Brattleboro, we looked at each other and we said, this is it. And I don't know how we knew it was our home. It was what we'd been searching for all that six months of tent camping around the country. My work is hugely influenced by my life here. In safekeeping, it's kind of a love letter to Brattleboro. There are a couple of moments where I rhapsodize about, about Brattleboro and what I love about it. This is really home for me. I feel so welcome here. And I feel no matter how difficult things are, and certainly we have our challenges, just as every place has their challenges. There's a level of tolerance and there's a level of, of civility and a level of neighborliness that transcends differences in political opinion and differences in economic situation. It's, there's, there's just something 
extraordinary, I think, about this state, and I have found it nowhere else in this country. And so, you know, Vermont, to, to receive this honor from this governor is so thrilling to me, and it just feels just as, you know, down-home comfort food good as any other experience in Vermont. I'm just, I'm delighted to be receiving the award. I'm delighted to be receiving it with the people, uh, the other people who are receiving it. And uh, I just feel, I feel like everybody deserves recognition in this state. Everybody works so hard and does such extraordinary work. So it's a real, real honor to be here.